Late last week, Democratic lawmakers voted on state House and Senate leadership positions. As expected, Casey Becker of Boulder was elected Speaker of the House, and Leroy Garcia of Pueblo was elected Senate President. Potential legislative agenda items will likely include oil and gas regulations and potential gun control issues. Uh, Patty, uh, I don't think anyone expects uh, Casey Becker to turn away any sort of left proposals from the House, but will Leroy Garcia be a, uh, I guess, a not a capital G governor, but a small g governor on the engine that would be the liberal, the left side of the liberal agenda? Well, the engine is already revving up. You can tell just by how quickly the Democrats have been working on some of their pr proposals. And you can tell there will be something coming up about fracking, although Jared Polis hasn't said, hasn't commented on what he's looking for. Both Casey Becker and the Senate Majority Leader, new Stephen Fenberg, signed off on a new Close Rocky Flats letter that was sent to Fish and Wildlife and the Department of uh, and Department of Energy last week. And although Casey Becker said that doesn't reflect that she'll necessarily put something forward about Rocky Flats, it certainly shows that people are talking about the environment. Oil and gas, they're going to be talking about that. Education, just by the number of reformers of all stripes that Jared Polis put on his task force, we're going to be seeing something about education. And it's almost inevitable that gun control will come up. The thing we have to remember is the last time the Democrats had both houses, two wound up getting recalled over gun control issues. David, in a polarized environment that we're in right now, I mean, if we look at the I guess what I would call the old school way legislators, legislators went about their business. They would look at the long game and want to be in power for a while. But now with, uh, in this polarized environment, I think we see more of the electorate wanting to get something done now from the wings of each party. Should the Democrats in charge party like it's 1999 and just do whatever they possibly can for two years? Well, uh, as my dad warned, this is one of the effects of, of term limits, which have their, their benefits too. But certainly there's people who say, well, I've... I've won my second term in the Senate, and that's going to be the end of it. So why not go all in? Uh, Colorado has, for for most of the last six decades, preferred divided government in some way. That if the House, the Senate, and the governor, that they're not all three uh, of the same party. And typically, when you get them all in one party, uh, you do have instances of overreach, as, as Patty said, the, the wild rumpus of the 2013-2014 session. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt that Democrats, which now are mostly a subsidiary of Michael Bloomberg, uh, will go all out for a culture war against law-abiding gun owners. That's, that's just, uh, that's inevitable. One law I think that they will pass, but probably not do a good job on, is something called uh, the red flag laws or the extreme risk protection orders to say that somebody has not been convicted of a crime or been adjudicated mentally ill uh, that uh, under certain circumstances their guns can be taken away I've endorsed the concept well over a year ago but the bill that was brought forward in the last legislative session was atrocious for due process I'm currently uh, starting work on the national uh, body the Uniform Law Commission which creates national model laws and hopefully we will be able to create a good national model law that fully respects all the elements of due process in such in in something like this uh, I would be also surprised if the Colorado legislature uh, gives much attention to the due process rights uh, of the unjustly accused in this uh, Ed, you, uh, despite your young age, are one of the more seasoned reporters at the Capitol. Uh, what's the scuttlebutt on this? Do you, or what are you hearing from lawmakers and staff folks of what it could be like this next legislative session? Well, I think the first thing to understand, and you alluded to this, uh, is the idea that Casey Becker and Leroy Garcia come from ideologically different parts of the Democratic Party. Uh, Garcia is kind of your classic blue-collar um, working man's Democrat. Casey is, a, or Becker, I should say, is an environmental attorney. That's where she's coming from. Um, I think you will see a lot of things coming out of the House because they, the Democrats not only expanded their lead in the House this year, but they brought in some very liberal members of the caucus who were actually going to push this caucus further left than it was last year. Um, uh, 
the Senate is not in the same position. You've got Garcia, who doesn't like to call himself a moderate, but has voted against increased oil and gas regulations in past years. You've got someone like a Rachel Zenzinger of Arvada, who lost the race for majority leader, but uh, still holds a lot of sway over there. And, and she literally told me before the election, we're going to work on oil and gas regulations, but we're gonna do, not going to do anything as extreme as what you saw Proposition 112, the setbacks measure do. So I think, and, and then you've got you know others like Angela Williams, who are kind of considered more on the pro-business moderate side there. I think you're going to see, um, in some ways, the Democratic Senate reining in the bills that are coming from the House a little bit. Now, for the past four years, it's been House Democrats pass bills, Republicans in the Senate kill them. Now I think it's going to be House Democrats pass bills, uh, Democrats in the Senate amend them. Uh, to make them maybe a little bit more uh, doable by some of the people they are aimed at regulating. Uh, but I think it's going to be a struggle within the party. And as everyone has alluded to here, nobody wants to think again about 2013 um, uh, and going overboard. Krista, uh, you wrote a great piece in the Post today. If you haven't checked it out, please do. Uh, and talking about one of the issues that people may think, uh, that you think, that actually would be a bit more, it could be more moderately handled by this whole democratic trifecta of power this next year. You know what, I would love to see a school choice bill come forward. And uh, we've got a, a robust charter school effort in this state, a couple hundred schools, very bipartisan. We also have uh, minority communities that are open to having a voucher program to really increase that, that number of schools that are open for, for kids and families to be able to, to get into the school that's right for them. Also, uh, Governor-elect uh, Governor Polis, uh, he has put some reformers, including pro-voucher and pro-charter school people on his transition committee for education. So I think that says that he's open to it. In the past, he has supported a limited voucher program. He's opened his own charter schools. He's very pro-charter school. So we could see something. Um, and I, that, that gives me some hope that at least the ideas will be on the table.